If anybody can use some extra cash for Christmas or the holidays, we're giving away $1,000 over on the Chaos Comics Twitter. The link is at the top of the description. Make sure you guys get entered. 10 winners, $100 each. Assault rifles. That's some of the most used weapons in Call of Duty. They're usually full auto and they feature some decent handling speeds while they also give you that balance of mid-range damage. Now, some ARs are obviously more versatile than others, but since everybody has their own favorite, I might as well give you my updated definitive list. What's up guys, Chaos here. Thank you for all the love on the COD history uh, videos lately. I see you, I'm glad you guys are enjoying them and we have a lot of Modern Warfare 2 coverage coming in the future. Today, this is the definitive list, an updated list of the 20 absolute best assault rifles in COD history. Now, if you're an MVP, give me your top 20 in the comment section. We can compare everybody's list to see what the most common picks are. I'm sure they're not gonna be the same, but that's okay. Drop a like, we start off at number 20. The AK-47 in Black Ops Cold War. Now remember, there's like five or 600 ARs, I think, so this is not easy. It's one of the best AKs in COD history, and that's saying something. It actually got banned from competitive play due to the theoretical power and the ridiculous versatility. Now the fire rate was low, most AKs are. The power behind every shot, that's where the magic happened capable of dropping enemies far faster than they were able to react. In the hands of a pro player, the Cold War AK was busted, and it's still a popular pick for sweaty 6v6 players looking to beef up their stats. Now, it's been adjusted a time or two, but it's still top tier, and it's a good way to kick off today's top 20. At number 19, the AN-94 in Black Ops 2. There was a time where this was way higher. Iconic weapon today, but when it was introduced back in Black Ops 2, it shocked us. An AR that fires the first few rounds faster than the rest? It confused us at first, but once we got the hang of it, all bets were off. Featured pretty moderate damage for a weapon of its type, but the trick is those first few rounds. Since the first two to three bullets came out faster than the rest, Black Ops 2 players were doing their best to get really good at mastering the timing of the burst. If you could hit the first couple shots with your AN-94, you were practically guaranteed to win the fight because of that hefty damage head start, but that meant the weapon really required you to get good with it, not just run around and spam mindlessly. Modern Warfare brought back the AN-94, but it wasn't as good as the original. The Black Ops 2 AN-94 is iconic. It's at number 19. So this list, I mean, this list is going to get nutty. At number 18, the Maddox RFB in Black Ops 4. Our first bullpup assault rifle that generated a lot of conversation in the community when BO4 launched, mainly because it was, come on, it was OP. The Maddox was one of the only guns used by competitive players, and even in public matches, it was spammed. It featured a very fast fire rate, very controllable recoil, a rather high damage output, and it kept the time to kill competitive in almost every scenario. Now on launch day in BO4, it could actually outgun a lot of the SMGs up close, while also outgunning the other rifles at mid to long range, which made it easily the best choice for players to try to maximize their performance. The Maddox, it was nerfed a few times, but it's still a top tier rifle. It was for the entirety of Black Ops 4 in the original version, will be remembered forever by anybody who actually experienced it. At number 17 today, the STG-44 in Vanguard. Do you guys ever, th I mean, do you think Sledgehammer, or think about why or how Sledgehammer made two World War II games in a row and both of them had completely overpowered STGs? Now, COD World War II's STG, it was annoying and spammed. It was nothing compared to the OG version of the Vanguard's rifle. The Vanguard STG featured a potential two-shot kill. It was somehow even more accurate and more powerful than the predecessor. Every COD game has at least one assault rifle. It gets spammed in the first few weeks of its life cycle, but the Vanguard STG, it was dominant. It was more dominant than usual. It took a while for it to get toned down. Some Vanguard players would even argue that after all the nerfs, still the best rifle in the game. You guys remember how 2019 M4 had to be nerfed a million times and it was still at the top of the pack? That's basically what happened to the Vanguard STG, although not quite as drastic. At number 16, the AK-47 in COD 4. I may get a little bit of heat for putting this gun on this list, but I think it deserves the respect. It was one of the first assault rifles you had access to, and a lot of people continued using it far into their unlocks. Now with stopping power, it was easily capable of a two-shot kill. It was dangerous up close. If you could control the recoil, you could drop enemies at max range with three bullets. Didn't need any attachments to be top tier. Didn't need to go into a gunsmith. It was just crazy, and it did have some weird hidden traits that made the attachments worse than they should have been. I mean, it doesn't matter. I love the COD 4 AK. I think it is a top 20 assault rifle. At number 15, the Honey Badger in COD Ghosts. Home to one of the best reload animations ever. 
It was the Silence Assault Rifle that was a fan favorite in Ghost and still one of the most remembered aspects of that game. It fired at an even 800 rounds per minute, but it could kill with as little as two bullets to the head, and since that suppressor was integrated with the weapon, you didn't have to use a spot in your class to keep yourself off the radar. Yes, it suffered at long ranges, but it was powerful enough for close to mid-range, it didn't matter. A lot of people stuck with it for the entirety of their time on Call of Duty Ghost. I love the gun, it sounded amazing, the reload animation was awesome, it's definitely deserving to be here. At number 14, the AS Val in Modern Warfare 2019. Every year, there's a handful of guns that are sweaty MLG TTV players like they just they spam them in our faces every single match. Modern Warfare, it was the AS Val. Fast firing assault rifle featured an integrated suppressor once again to keep you off the radar at all times without requiring a slot of your class, which was nice. But what really set it apart was the insane damage per shot. Like I said, it already fired and uh, it fired rather quickly. I think it was over 900 rounds per minute, but it could hit for as much as 48 damage, meaning it could easily kill with three shots. Now the integrated suppressor and insanely fast time to kill made it an easy choice for super aggressive players, especially ones that wanted to slide cancel around the map and shove their gun in people's faces. It is one of the few Modern Warfare guns that was super powerful and super popular, but it never really had a presence in Warzone. The rifle's rather small magazine probably kept it from being a popular pick in the Battle Royale mode. In standard multiplayer though, top tier. Moving right along to number 13, the Foul OSW in Black Ops 2, one of the first guns to ever get banned from competitive play. It was semi-automatic rifle, and it was the only gun that Black Ops 2 players wanted to use. A high fire rate cap, no recoil, you would expect low damage, but it was virtually always a two-shot kill. It was one of the most intimidating guns in the entire game. Handling, damage, time to kill. It was too powerful in the hands of a pro player, resulting in Treyarch just pulling out of competitive play. They didn't nerf it. They didn't try to tone it down. They made a statement. They ripped it out. When the developer decides to completely delete part of their game instead of trying to balance it, they know they created a monster. Speaking of monsters, Segway, number 12, ACR, Modern Warfare 2. You may want to punch me for putting it this low on the list, but you have to keep in mind, there's literally hundreds of assault rifles in COD history now, so I'm putting the ACR at number 12 out of every single one of them. That's a good spot. I know six years ago, it would have been in that top three, possibly one. Laser beam, we already know. OG, not hard to see why. No recoil, hit like a freaking truck, stopping power. Come on, I don't need to tell you guys anything you already know. I mean, dropping people from across the map like you were playing a point-and-click adventure game instead of a first-person shooter. That's what the experience with the ACR was like. Some people still insist that it's the best assault rifle in COD history. I'm not going to disagree with those claims. I just, I have a different opinion today. At number 11, the KN-44 in Black Ops 3, another left field pick. Starting gun, heavily resembled the AK-47, but it had very different behavior traits. It featured a moderate fire rate, good damage, but what made it amazing was the range. Up close, it was a three-shot kill. Max range, four-shot kill. The shots to kill were extremely consistent, very intimidating to go up against, making it arguably the best assault rifle in the game despite being unlocked by default. With no attachments, it was already one of the most reliable guns in the game, and people had some pretty insane builds with it. Now we reach the top 10. The bar. COD World War II. Now, this bar fell victim to one of the fastest nerfs I've ever seen in COD history, and even after it was patched, it remained in the very high tiers. The only, I, th I think the only faster one was the MSBS, to be honest with you. The bar was the final rifle unlocked in COD World War II. The original version only lasted a mere four days before getting nerfed multiple times. Featured low recoil, solid fire rate, incredibly high damage, high enough to kill with three bullets, but what used to be a slow weapon for area denial... It turned into one of the most busted rushing ARs ever put in a Call of Duty game and Sledgehammer had to act really fast in order to keep it from completely dominating the game. If you're playing COD World War II in the first week, you know how insane the bar was. Everybody had it. I think it got nerfed four times and it's still a high tier pick for multiplayer. At number nine, the M4 in Modern Warfare 2019. Once again, not much to tell you guys. One of the most iconic weapons in COD history. It's appeared a lot of times. Let me know what your favorite version is. But nobody here can deny the 2019 version was statistically the best. It took Infinity War way too long to nerf it. Heck, even to this day, I think it's still the best AR in standard multiplayer. It's just versatile. I mean, in the insane number of attachments, come on. Fast fire rate, moderate damage, extremely accurate, huge bonuses, easy to use. It was busted. We know it. We'll see if it ends up busted again in Modern Warfare 2. At number eight, the Krieg 6 in Black Ops Cold War. Who remembers years ago when that, that very first leak about Black Ops Cold War gameplay came out and the internet was desperately trying to figure out what gun is this? 
Little do we know, the first Cold War rifle we ever laid eyes on would remain the best rifle in the game for the entirety of its life cycle. The Krig, moderate fire rate, moderate damage, but the versatility was off the charts. Yes, now the raw stats are nothing to write home about, but the sheer number of attachments and the fact that the gun could be fine-tuned for any playstyle and still perform excellently, that, that was the appeal for the community. It could be kitted out for long range, it could be kitted out for short range, stealth, aggression, it didn't matter. You get what I'm saying. Plus... It felt buttery smooth in the process. The gun slapped in every different manner. At number seven, the M8A1 in Black Ops 2, the first four round burst weapon in COD history. It was a fan favorite, still talked about to this day. The time between bursts, it was short since you only needed three of those four bullets to connect in order to get somebody. It was one of the top tier weapons of Black Ops 2 uh, at, at your disposal. Some people called it overpowered, they demanded nerfs. Others thought it was perfectly balanced as it was due to the high skill level required to use it effectively. You had to be careful with your burst. You didn't want to get caught in a reload or allow your enemy to time to react to you at the same time, but the theoretical time to kill, it was crazy. Get three or four hit markers all at once and see the enemy's body drop to the floor. It was satisfying. It was smooth. It's definitely, uh, I think, number seven's a fair spot. At number six, one of the most slept on ARs in COD history, and I'm going to give it the love it deserves. The Scar H in Black Ops 2. You're going to rip me apart. I don't care. It was god tier, and if you didn't use it, you missed out. It fired at 625 rounds per minute, but it could kill with two bullets to the head, and even at max range, it only needed three to four shots to connect. The iron sights are some of the cleanest we've ever seen, meaning that you could use an attachment slot for something else. Extended mag, stock, didn't matter. The insane power, the superb accuracy, it made one of the best guns in the entire game, but since it wasn't flashy like the M8A1 or the Scorpion Evo, it was overlooked. In recent years, the Scar has developed a bit of a fan club, but the Black Ops 2 version did not get the appreciation it deserved in the moment, and it's a shame. That's why I have it at number 6. Now we get into the top 5, the best of the best. At number 5, the BAL-27 in Advanced Warfare. I know, it's one of the most hated guns in COD history, that's why it's so high. It had some weird personality traits, but most people remember the gun that broke Advanced Warfare. It would fire faster over time. It encouraged you to hold down the trigger and spray, which you could, you would want to do anyway because the damage was insane. Three to five shot kill, very fast handling, low recoil. On top of that, you had a number of variants that made it better. So let me ask you, which bow variant did you abuse the most? The Steed, the Royalty, the Inferno? I mean, you don't need to get it twisted, though. The standard issue, Bow 27, still one of the most powerful guns in the game, and a lot of people just renamed Advanced Warfare Battle of Duty because of a gun. At number four. The FAMAS in Black Ops 1. I've said before that Black Ops 1 is my favorite Call of Duty game, and it's true, but I can openly admit that the gun balance was really, really bad. Despite having a lot of weapons, it was dominated by the FAMAS assault rifle. I mean, Treyarch thought it would be a good idea to have a gun that performed literally every possible role better than any specialized weapon could. Up close, better time to kill than SMGs. Mid-range, better time to kill than ARs. Long range, better time to kill than LMGs. I mean, the FAMAS truly did it all. It did. The insane fire rate, the absurd damage, it's sp the sound of spitting hot metal. It was crazy. Yes, it had recoil, but it was vertical. You could adapt to it super easy. It was perhaps the most dominant assault rifle in Black Ops history, but I still think there's three that were slightly better, although these last four to five guns could have honestly been in any order, if you ask me. At number three, probably my hottest take of the day, the FAMAS in Modern Warfare 2. See what I did? Seriously. It was insane. I think it was slightly better than the Black Ops 1 counterpart. Instead of being fully automatic, it was a three-round burst that functioned very similarly to the COD 4 M16, but with additions of attachments and probe hurts. 900 rounds per minute, stopping power, two shots to connect. I mean, it gave it one of the fastest times to kill in Call of Duty. Iron sight super clean. Recoil, there is no recoil. Allowed you to tag people up from across the map and one burst them. A lot of people argue the Modern Warfare 2 FAMAS was actually better than the COD 4 M16 that it took influence from, but... I'm going to throw you guys another curveball. At number two, you probably thought it was number one. The M16A4 in COD 4. Now, even though the Modern Warfare 2 FAMAS had more attachments and perks, I think this was the better rifle. I mean, COD 4 was a simpler game. It was just, it was easy. It was a standout. It would kill in two bullets. No recoil. It was punishing. I mean, I know COD 4 didn't have pro perks and it only had a few attachments and there's only three kill streaks, but because of the simplicity... It just outperformed everything. I don't really have anything else to say. You already know. Number one today, I said that was the hottest take. Not even close. None of you expected this. I'll give you three guesses. If it, think of a gun that hasn't been named yet, and then you're going to be shocked. At number one today, the ACR 6.8 in Modern Warfare 3. 
I'm gonna get some heat, I know, you may have preferred, or preferred the Modern Warfare 2 version, but if you think back to those Modern Warfare 3 days, you know deep down the gun belongs here. Fully automatic, low recoil, super clean iron sights, moderate fire rate, some of the highest damage in the class, you mix it all together, you've got a gun that frankly should not have made it through testing without somebody saying something. The ACR could kill in two bullets, guys. I mean, the fire rate was solid. You could easily outgun people with SMGs up close. You could laser them from max range. You could melt them. The versatility, the ease of use, the mobility. It was a beast. It was a trifecta weapon all the way around. I know you're going to disagree, but I'm ready to defend myself in the comments. I think the Modern Warfare 3 ACR is the best assault rifle in COD history. And I already know somebody's going to say, well, where was the Remington from COD Ghost? You're right. Probably should have squeaked in somewhere. Let me know what you guys think. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you soon.